video with Karen Zima. Today we're going to work on this lovely landscape with the beautiful sky and sunset and the path and the trees. We're going to, I'll show you how to put it all together. Just stay tuned and I will show you how. If I can do it, you can do it. Stay tuned. Alright guys, let me, um, I lightly have this sketched out. This is our landscape we're going to be working on today. And it's going to be um, like a setting sun and a lot of gray and yellowy clouds with a hint of orange on them. Most of the setting sun is going to be down the horizon line, down around here. So you're going to know what time of day it is. The sun is setting. And then there's going to be a row of trees coming down that way at an angle. One lonely tree here. And they frame this path. There's going to be a path in here, and over here is going to be like fields of red poppies and maybe some white flowers, and distant tree line and mountains, right about there. So that about does it. So let's get started on this project. Let me get my palette and we'll get going. Back, and I brought my palette. Now I'm going to show you some of the colors I put out to get started on this project with. It's very colorful. I love my color. So, we'll start over here with the Patello Green. I know they're kind of runny. And then there's like a, like a more medium green and a Kiwi Green. A bright, bright yellow. Bright orange. Kind of a mellowed down orange with uh, some yellow in it. A bright red. Very light lemony yellow. A brown, a black and white in the center. Then we have some cloud colors here. There's a blue, a lilac, and a gray. All going to go into the sky. And what I'm going to do, start the sky with, I'm going to put in a very light, light, um, take this blue here. Very pretty blue. I'm going to add some white to it. Water it down. And then, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this bright yellow. I'm going to make this color here. It's going to be a nice cloud color. And I'm going to take some of the blue over here. And add some white. A nice, basic Basic sky color, just as, ooh, look at that. That is exactly what I was going for. It's kind of a grayish yellow, a little hint of blue in it. Just like that. Very pretty. I am loving it already. Let's go down in here. Let's grab a little light yellow. There we go. So I don't want a blue sky, and I don't want it white, and I don't want it all yellow. So kind of the combination of all three works. I'm going to make it a little bluer up top. It's a shade. Just a shade darker up there. Because you know the skies get lighter as you go down towards the horizon. Ours is going to get oranger. So, there we go. Especially in the corners. I like to kind of vigilant the corners. Get them darker. I like a vignette effect. Alright. This is sort of a sweeping motion. We're covering the canvas. Let's go a little bit lighter in here. Just blend it out.
All right, and I am using a fan brush here, a Benici fan brush, just to feather things out here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this gray, nice gray color, put in some of this lilac. We're going to darken it down with a hint of black. A nice dark. And here is going to be our one of our main clouds. Very pretty, very pretty color. And it's kind of going to go down almost in, well into the tree line a little. Maybe it just kind of comes out in weird, weird shape kind of thing here. And then maybe bubbles up into that. Alright, that's a cloud. Now this one I think I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So just add a little black to that. some branches out here. And one over here, just kind of maybe a small one puffed out. Yeah, maybe a tiny. You know how they break off and stuff. And you add a little bit of dark to that and make the darkest part of this cloud up in the corner so it brings your eye in. Alright, just kind of blend it. Blend it in. take a little bit of this color here, maybe make a couple, a couple of holes in the color. So we have white, a little bit of blue in it, a little yellow, and it's a hole. And we have a hole here, like I are just the basic tones of the cloud that we're working on. They're not anywhere near done. Just come along here. A nice stormy looking cloud. But it's not stormy, it's just not getting any light. Because the sun is setting and it's more or less on the bottom. It's Cloud. 
going to blend that out, let it dry a little, and go another layer. Get a nice blending brush. These clouds are very soft and moving better. Clouds are also a lot of fun to work on. And this brush there, alright, we're going to get a little bit of, well, get some white, and we're going to put some light yellow in it, maybe a little bit of this orange. Make this pretty color right here. A little more light orange. Okay. Brush. Blend it. I'm going to go around. Some would catch right there. Blend it out. Very soft. Very soft looking. Thank you. 
curve. Okay. 
you guys. I am pretty happy with the sky. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to put in the line of trees and start working on these dark, dark trees that are here. So what I'm going to do is get my pithalo, some black, make a nice, nice dark, dark color. And let's see. Let's just go ahead and map in the tree line. I always start with a pathalo green and mix black in with it as my base dark color. I love starting with that color and then I just add the lights and the highlights and different tones in the middle section. There are two key factors to painting realistic trees. The first one is very, very, very important. It may come easy to some and others, they need to train their eye. When doing your trees, it is vitally important to train your eyes to find patterns in the trees. Look for the lights and the darks. I know you've been looking at trees your whole life, but now you need to seriously study the shapes, the patterns, the lights, the shadows. Each tree is different and unique Powers in its are. own way. This gives you artistic freedom. First, find the overall shape of the tree. Then start looking at the smaller shapes. Then train your brush to capture the illusion of leaves. Careful observation and some experimentation, <clears throat> you will eventually develop your own style of achieving the effect of leaves. Next, take a look at the branches and the trunk. Are the branches growing out? Are they growing upward? Are they straight? Are they jagged? Are they gnarly? Really take the time to look. Then, you need to give the tree depth and dimension. We will achieve that by the variances in the tone and color. Lighter leaves over dark give the tree volume and depth. I guess the main practice to painting anything or drawing anything is learning to see. Then train your brush and watch your landscapes come to life. Okay, guys, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some tree trunks. So I'm going to find a fine brush, tree branches. I get some brown, some very light brown. And what do I need? I need some white. Let's put some white in there. Get this really nice light color. Whenever I see a beautiful scene or a field with a view, it just beckons me for a nice summer picnic lunch. I don't even care if I'm alone. I'll bring a picnic basket. It still beckons me. Or just to sit there and enjoy it, read a book or have a glass of wine or anything. Just sit there and enjoy it and study it. That's what I do. 
All right, right now I am just spreading around tones of blue, green, yellow, brown, orange, maybe some white, in various tones all around the field and under the trees. Put it on just however you want. Just put it on, just get the paint down, and then later we can add details to it. Acrylics actually is a great medium for creating beautiful scenes and landscapes of nature. The wide variety of colors that you can create and blend can help you make realistic fields and green grass come to life. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some grass. Poppies are magical, and when in a field, they can make the field so alive with color. It makes you want to capture their beauty on canvas or paper. There is a mystic quality to this humble flower, and no wonder why so many great artists painted them. Van Gogh, Claude Monet, Mary Cassatt, Georgia O'Keeffe. Poppies are a strong, bold flower. They are not hard to paint and can really look stunning against the greens in your landscape. The other flower we're going to use is Queen Anne's Lace. Now Queen Anne's Lace belongs to the carrot family and can reach heights of one to four feet. It is also grown in so many parts of the U.S. and Europe that it is considered to be a wildflower or an invasive weed. Now me, I always considered them to be an attractive flower and almost magical in appearance. Well, neither flower is hard to paint. So what I'm gonna do is get a bristle brush and give the illusion of both the poppy and Queen Anne's lace. So with the bristle brush and just tapping the side of the brush, I can get the shape of the flower. So there you go, there's the secret. Have fun, let yourself go, Enjoy the freedom of your mind, your soul, and your brush. All right, guys, step back, take a look. See if there's any areas in your painting that you would like to keep on working. That's what I do. I always step back and take a look. And sometimes you see things that you haven't seen while you're up close working on it. So, 
I'm going to call it quits on this, so I hope you guys had fun watching. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please, please, please. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So, keep on practicing. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.